officer of the NNL. Congratulations. And uh, uh, let's move further a bit. Uh, we looked at your resume and everything. It's quite rich, I must tell you for sure. And congratulations on that. It shows that you have uh, uh, more knowledge when it comes to footballing. Now, I want to ask, how much did you know about the NNL before your appointment? Well, I've been, I've been in football all my life. I've only been in for over... Uh, three, three details. I know a lot about the NNL. Uh, in the federal capital country we are inside, mm. we have the uh, NNL clubs. Okay. And of course, I go to work their uh, matches. And uh, in the course of working these matches, I've uh, seen uh, some shortcomings, which I want to kill myself if I had the opportunity not to correct. I never need a thought to make it possible. All those shortcomings in uh, the NNN, by God, this will go the correction. It was also interesting to know that when I was SDFHR, mm. the ERCC football club was in the second tier of the league, and we got it promoted to the player. Yeah. So I have a very big appeal about the NNN. It's, mm. it's a familiar career. All right, uh, Mr. Emmanuel, uh, I want to get um, into another difficult question here. Uh, there was a time I was speaking to Ibrahim Galadima, that was years ago, and he said almost exactly what you're saying here, that it's a new dawn, mm. uh, but then to, today, with all due respect, we're still struggling to get that league um, in shape. Now, I want to speak about players' contracts. You agree with me that a lot of players in the NNL have no contract, which is even against the rules of football. God, you know, God bless you. Uh, right in my thoughts, you know, this is we are having a, a board meeting, the first board meeting. This issue, you think, is one of those uh, issues that I am going to bring forward for this person. Mm. I must confess to you, the actors, the players in the MNF, they are wealthy and is very poor. I am going to propose that there must be a contract between the players, the club. Furthermore, there must be a minimum remuneration for for the players, which we are going to perform. It's going to be my uh, proposal. We are very likely to get that uh, those of the players who get there that have no contract, mm. their welfare is poor. And definitely, the board will address this issue. It's not going to be too late, but too short. Okay. Mm. All right, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Atta, uh, let's take it to another dimension right about now. Uh, let's talk about the league proper. And you would agree with me that gradually, in terms of sports, in terms of football, it is turning into a big business in Nigeria. And one of our major problems has to be with publicity. And uh, you can't do anything without sponsorship. So one of the major problems has to do with how we're going to get sponsorship in terms of the local league. How do you intend to solve that problem with the NNL? Okay. Hello, Mr. Emmanuel. Hello. Can you hear us loud and clear? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, we'll take the question again. All right. Yes, I, I go to Okay. Okay, so... The sponsorship is... I don't think we haven't difficulties. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, so we'll, we'll try and reestablish contact uh, with Ms. Kamal. Emmanuel Atawa is the new mm. NNL chairman has been speaking to us on how he will reconstruct the league and make it um, um, rich and, of course, uh, watchable. And some of the questions we've been asking while mm. we try to reconnect has been a player's welfare in terms yeah. of having contracts. He just talked about that. And she also that. asked um, a valid question. Mm. It seems we have Mr. Emmanuel Atta back on the line. All right, not yet on the line. And um, one of the questions you raised will be sponsorship. Of course. Uh, because even the NPFL is mm. still suffering. Of course. And also talk about the second tier, uh, which is the NNL. So, well, 
Uh, one of the questions will be, how do we get sponsors? Because exactly. it's key, Nangi. Mm. And you, 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 you did talk about something. Uh, you said you had, uh, I think, an interview or a chat years ago with mm. one of these organizers. Right. And of course, he did talk about the fact that there would be changes. But as a it matter would, of fact... The way it for, sounded, yeah. no. Mm. It was tomorrow. Exactly. For mm. some years now, we have been stagnant. And these are some of the issues that we actually need to pick up, trash out, if we want to move uh, further in, uh, in football, most especially from our local leagues because I do not think that well, without the success of, of uh, our local leagues we'll be able to have the superstars we now have here in Nigeria applying their trades in different uh, top flight football but we'll see how things pans out to be while we try to reconnect with him let's give you the full list of newly constituted board members and their chairman now for the Nigerian National League that's for the NNL we have Mr. George Aluo as a chairman we have Honorable Kamisu Ahmad Mailantaki as a vice chairman and we have Mr. Yakubo Sama as a member of the board. We also have Malam Sani Mohammed as a member. And uh, not forgetting Donald, Dr. Donald Ikbe, Chief Joseph Uzoma, and we have Chief Dotun Sanusi, and of course, Mr. Emmanuel Atta as a chief executive officer, that's for the NNL. While for the Nigerian Nationwide League on, that's the NLO. Uh, for the chairman, we have Honorable Silas Agara, Mr. Adeoye Adekbe Jude as a vice chairman. Uh, for the members, we have Malam Sabo Abdullahi, Mr. Ogeno Chuko, we have Mr. Tunji Onatulu, we have Barista Bokno Akinta Day, and of course, for the chief, chief executive officer, we have Malam Hassan Abdullahi Garu, and not leaving out the Nigerian Women Football League. We also have as chairman Ms. Nkechi Neka Obi. We have Hajia Husaina Suleiman as the vice chairman. For the members, we have Mr. Yodele Thomas, Ms. Henrietta Ehiobo, and uh, Mr. Danny Nazal. That is how it stands when it comes to the newly appointed board members from the NNL to the NLO and down to the NWFL. So that's how we stand. And uh, just like we we're rightly stating about the NFF president, uh, talking about the fact that the board should be up and doing. Of course, the inauguration was just held. And as the 2023-2024 uh, league season approaches, Ibrahim Gusar has charged the respective arms of league systems to come up with feasible plans and marketing strategies that will take the domestic game to the next level. Of course, that's what we've been talking about. For a long time now, we need to have feasible plans in line with what can make us grow. But uh, we're still trying to reach Mr. Emmanuel Atta because these are some of the questions we've been asking. And we need to get a headway of some of those plans as he would be dishing it out to us. All right, so I think we have Mr. Emmanuel Atta uh, joining us uh, right now. Um, uh, Mr. Emmanuel, thank you and welcome back online. Thank you. All right, so quickly, because we know you're very busy, um, uh, the um, question we're asking then will be uh, that, I mean, in a nutshell, mm. uh, the NPFL itself, that's the major league, is trying to get sponsors. Uh, so we're saying, how do you make the NNL attractive in terms yeah. of attracting sponsors? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, well, that is your very active. Work hard you have from people who don't listen to So we will partner to get the letters to save the lead mm. and the family. Okay, uh, that's it, uh, Mr. Emanuata says uh, that um, they will part down. One more question mm. from my partner. Uh, and just before we let you go, now, for the past season, that's a 2022-2023 season for the Nigerian Premier Football League, we, we did see some positives only to the fact that it was the IMC that was now in charge. And I would like to ask before we let you go, what are those areas in which you would like to leave a long-lasting impact in the NNL? Well, our vision we are our teaching of oh, we are going to help our club and to the infrastructure to have a comfort play where we are the players can fit and also the public condition fits it. So we want to return this out to the state. This is a of 
sponsorship. All right, Mr. Emmanuel Atar, we must thank you for your time and uh, congratulations uh, once again. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel Atar, I know I'll be attending your birthday party. You'll be 61 in August, am I correct? Yes. Definitely, we should be at the party. I just send our invitations and of course we'll come party with you. <laughs> All right. Thanks for being a part of the show, Mr. Emmanuel Latar, a newly appointed NNL uh, chairman there. We thank you and uh, thanks for being a part of the show. And of course, and uh, diving into other stories, of course, we heard from uh, Mr. Emmanuel Latar uh, talking about some of the challenges and how they hope to put in feasible plans to be able to make sure that the NNL gets to a better level in terms of uh, that. I think the NNL is on. Oh, okay, okay. I think that they are done. It's the NLO that yeah. is on. They are done. And we had the likes of Sporting FC of Lagos gain promotion back into uh, the NPF of that's Nigerian Premier Football League. So congratulations to each and every of the executive members of the sport. And we hope to see a better uh, league in terms of next year. Now let's jump into another story because uh, like I just stated earlier on Joseph, we have so many things going ahead in order to make next season better. And let's talk about the Nigerian Premier Football League also. Mm. I talk about Nigerian Football League here. Yeah, we know that Finiti George, according to uh, the management of A Inver, says he remains the coach. Um, uh, but uh, then we also know that at this point yesterday, there was a memo sent to the coaches and the players that um, they should uh, reapply and that's the situation of course that's the situation on ground and i think that came out negatively uh that was negatively interpreted rather to some other people but uh let's get into a bit of details as it concerns that one now abia state government has denied the sacking of aimba international head coach that's fini de george now this follows a statement credited to aimba's new chairman Uwako Kano, stating that all the technical crew of the club should reapply for the positions they are currently holding now the statement was made available to BSN Sport and was released by the club's new sporting director, Ifanye Kweme, acting on behalf of Kanu, which handed a 48-hour ultimatum to the team's technical crew. And aside from that, uh, the letter titled Application for Reabsorption into Aimba Management reads, and I quote, the management staff and technical crew of Aimba first and second teams are hereby instructed to reapply for their positions with immediate effect. All applications should be submitted to the club's uh, TMS manager within 48 hours. And responding to that, the Abia State Government in another statement signed by the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Kezie Uku, stated emphatically that the former Super Eagles captain who just led Aimba to winning its ninth Nigerian Premier League title for the club remained the head coach. That is how it stands as it concerns uh, that uh, situation. Now okay. still on the Nigerian Premier League we understand also that the club owners have elected new executive members. What have uh, elected the new executive members to lead the association and this was in a brief and peaceful election conducted by the 20 clubs in the St. Vela Hotel in Abuja on Monday afternoon. Rivers United Football Club of Portaco General Manager Chief O.K. Uh, was elected chairman while the president of Vermo Stars a Football Club in Kenya, Ogun State, Honorable Kunle Soname, and uh, Doma United Football Club of Gombe State, Al Haji Suleiman Umar, were elected vice chairman to represent the South and North are parts of Nigeria. Of course, that is how it stands. Everyone trying to put their house in order to ensure a better league management system and, of course, a better. Uh, league season. Now, still in the NPFL, giving you updates as it concerns that. Uh, recall that recently, uh, we just had the just concluded Niger Super 8 won by the Sporting FC Lagos, but there were controversies attached to that particular one. And uh, an update reaching us right here from the Punch newspaper states that the head coach of Ramos Stars, Daniel Ogumo Dede, has been fined 250,000 Naira by Niger Super 8 organizers for inappropriate conduct in the final match of the tournament on Sunday at the Mobalaji Johnson Arena, Lagos. This was disclosed in a statement issued by the organizers on Monday. And the fine flycat production said it is on account of Ogumo Dede's decision to order his players off the pitch over an officiating call he disagreed with. Now, the players, however, ignored the order and continued the match, which they lost 4 2 on penalties after a 1 0 draw in regulation time. Right away from that, let's talk about the guests right now and talk about Super Falcons World Cup and um uh, what do we have as an update, Nagy? Of course, we have a whole lot to talk about. Just like I rightly stated before, 
We have two days before the beginning of the FIFA Women's World Cup. And according to BBC, of course, they did talk about the top 10 stars to look forward to their performance at the 2023 Women's World Cup. And of course, uh, Asisha Toshwala was not left out in that list because, of course, she has done a whole lot. Toshwala's honors features a Champions League title, three-time African uh, Championship for Nigeria, back-to-back -back titles from a spell in China, and a whole lot to talk about. It tells you even in a performance also. But the nine others, uh, nine other players to look forward to are the likes of Sam Kerr, who plays for Australia, Alexia Putelas, who plays for Spain, in Ada Hegerberg for Norway, Alex Morgan from the United States, Kira Walsh from England, Alexandra Pop from Germany, and of course we have Mata from Brazil, Wendy Renard from France, and not forgetting Penel Hada for the Denmark. Now, uh, Joseph, at this point in time, we're all optimistic about the performance of the Super Falcons. They would start their campaign on the 21st of July against Canada. And I think uh, we've played against Canada twice, if I'm not mistaken, and it was not so good, but it was just on, a, on an average and we do hope that we'll replicate a better performance when it comes to that first match. Well, we hope we'll do something better on the 21st and at least get one past the Canadian national mm. team, the Olympic champions. And we know how huge that is. It's going to be a tough game. And that is what Augustine Gravon was saying yesterday, that to win your first game or at least get a point and the Super Falcons can start thinking of qualifying. They lose mm. the first game against Canada. You've only sent a wrong message yeah. uh, to the main two teams that... Um, you can be beaten. So it's going to be a huge one. I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's like a final before a final uh, because I believe that will determine if the girls get to the next stage or not. And away from the Women's World Cup, we know that as Nigeria's 4 by 100 men's really team continue their ticket chase for the 2023 at the World Athletics Championship in Budapest, the team has undergone some changes. Now, after failing to meet up with the required standard, Set by the World Athletics, they continue to chase in Nigeria meets at the Yaba College of Technology. And that was last week and failed to meet the requirement. According to the updates coming from the team's camp, Sheye Ugulewe has uh, been drafted, drafted rather, it would, uh, to replace Nigeria's number, uh, Nigeria's number, um, that's Isha Kiri. Mm. And uh, Shakiri was confirmed to have dropped out of the team and returned to his base. So, so the quartet of Sheye and Laba, Gutsin and Ashe will now represent Nigeria in the Bene Republic mates. Congratulations uh, to them. Let's see how far we can be able to go when it comes to Budapest Hungary 2023. Let's not forget to recall that I think sometime two weeks back or last week, we also had uh, what's her name, Tobiloba Musa qualifying to also represent Nigeria in Budapest 2023. So all the best uh, to them. That's it from the locals. So we need to go on the break. We told you we have how many days? Two more days uh, before the FIFA World Cup kick starts. Uh, let's give you some highlights and vote to uh, the FIFA World Cup. How prepared are all the countries um, going to participate at the World Cup? We'll be back. To whom it may concern, what I'm doing here is not for you. No boy I know has ever been told he shouldn't play, couldn't play. I am no longer interested in shouldn'ts or couldn'ts or rules not written for me. I am not worried about getting too big or too strong or too fast or too full of myself. I do not agree that playing like a man is a compliment. When I play, I keep my own score. When I play, I know who I am. This field, this world, too small to hold me. When I play, I know I won't be undone. 